Welcome to the 3D Animation Hub, my name is Brian and today we're going to be doing another Rococo video. I've been getting spammed with DMs to do another Rococo video and with it another 10% off coupon. So every time I make a Rococo video, uh, they send over a 10% coupon off of the suit, which then I can share with you guys. This is the time limited code, which is available for about a week. So when, when this video gets released, up until a week after, you get 10% off using the code up up there yeah we'll go with up there so so far i have about four videos on rococo going from reviewing the suit all the way to recording emotion capture sending it over to blender and applying it to a character now in this video in particular we'll be looking more into cleaning that mocap data maybe fixing some knee pops uh, feet sliding and just some other stuff to enhance the animation the mocap before we send it over to the 3D software. And we'll also look at how to shrink the section that you wanna send over. So in, instead of sending you walking away from the camera, doing the action walking towards the camera, you can cut all that fluff out and just have the action and pop that over into your 3D software. So we'll learn how to do that as well in this video. Now, if that sounds like a good time, make sure to smash that like button and let's hop in. So today we're going to be using Locomotion, which is offered by uh, the Rococo Studio themselves. This is the Rococo Studio app. Um, here are some takes I did a while ago for the previous video. <laughs> and oh, for, for, forgot what I did for them. Okay, okay, enough dabs, Brian. Stop. <laughs> okay. So, for, so first off, let's see if there's any feet sliding that we can catch in here. I'm going to come here and make sure uh, Locomotion is on. And then we get access to these bars right here, right down here. And so we can turn on the gizmos and now we can see when each foot is touching. So each time there's a bar, that means there's a foot touching. Now here's a pretty prominent one. So we have the my screen left foot, uh, the blue foot right here. So here it's saying it's touching the ground and then it kind of disappears, which it's, it's thinking that it, I lifted off the ground. So what we're going to do is I'm going to drag this over all the way to the other end. So we're telling it, yeah, the foot is staying on the ground and I want the foot to touch the ground here. So a little bit earlier, so they're overlapping. So our character isn't really floating. One foot needs to always touch the ground before the other one lifts. And there's a slight delay before that. So now we have the blue foot staying put. And so we're gonna look for stuff like that. I'm gonna quickly go through this and try and fix any sort of missteps where the feet is off the ground when it shouldn't be. And then we'll come back and I'll show you guys how to see the changes. Okay, so I went through it and I tried to fix up all the missteps that I found. Now, the thing is you won't really see the changes on screen. What you have to do is come down to this bar right here that says process changes. So every time you make changes, this will pop up and it'll be blue. So I'm gonna click that and now the changes have been processed. So let's take another quick look at this. Okay, so the feet sliding, <laughs> the feet sliding look a lot better now. Now that's not the only thing we're gonna do. So for the next filter we're gonna use, come to the filter menu and let's turn on drift fix. And let's make sure to turn on the gizmo over here. So once we turn it on, we get these two little locators. We have start position and end position. Um, since Rococo doesn't actually record where your character is in real space, it kind of tries to predict it based on the steps you take. And so we're just going to help it predict it a little bit better. So we'll say the start position is right here. And let's go all the way to the end. And we'll say the end position is... Alright, so that looks good. Let's say that's the end position. This is the start position. And now we're going to press process changes and I'm going to actually turn this off and instead turn the gizmo on and let's see if that looks a little bit better. Awesome, so that's that's looking a lot better to me. There's a lot less feet actually sliding in the world and there's just some, there's just some rotations going on but that's just me walking weird, I think. Uh, but this is looking a lot crisper, it's looking a lot better. We're going to do a few more things and then we're going to be ready to export this. So let's go back to the filter. Let's turn on IK foot. And there isn't much that you need to do with IK foot. Again, it's just a filter that it applies to your character to help try and calculate the mocap data better. And we're going to proceed changes. And one last filter we're going to add on is knee popping, knee smoothing. Now with knee smoothing, 
and actually with any of these you can set keys um so if for example if you want your character's feet to drift at some point for some reason or if you want your character's knee to pop uh, you can actually set keys by coming here and adding a key and there's our key right there and then we can come here and add another key so now um, the value of these keys is essentially one which means it's active once you can bring it down and make the value zero and we can do the same with this so now it goes from a value of one to a value of zero it doesn't apply anymore and so the knee popping filter isn't applied anymore and it's it's a curve based system uh, it's I'm, I'm sure you guys know how that works you should be used to it if you're in animation but let's process the changes let's play one last time and then we can export this animation shake it Brian all right okay so that's looking a lot better um, there's a lot less knee popping as well um, it, let me see I, I don't even think I see a single knee pop okay there was kind of one there but it was a lot worse beforehand this is looking so much better and now that we're ready to export this um, let's cut it up where we just have the action so I'm gonna come into the timeline right here and I'm going to press shift so let's see where the action starts um, the action starts right here so I'm gonna press shift from here and I'm going to drag it and let's see where the action ends so the action ends right there on that tab so I'm again I'm holding shift now and I'm going to drag this all the way to that dab now it should when we export it should just export this segment that we created so it would just be from here <laughs> and it should end right here so let's go ahead and export this data so I'm going to right click on this take which is the one we're working on take six go to export and we're gonna have it as an fbx file i don't want the body mesh to come with it so it'll just be the skeleton the, where the animation is binary and leave it as human ik i have it at 24 fps just because when i animate i animate in 24 fps and let's pick a file location so i pick my file location and now we can press export so let's hop into Blender real quick. Let's import our FBX that we just created. Now again, we didn't export the mesh with this. So we're just gonna look at the skeleton animation, make sure everything's good. Yeah, okay, so it starts right on our action. It does the little, <laughs> the, the lot of dabbing that I do and it ends on that last dab. So that's exactly what we wanted and that's exactly what we got that is perfect now if you're wondering how to apply this to a character i have a video on that i'll put that in the top right you can click on that and there's a whole playlist you guys can watch so you get a little bit more familiar with uh rococo studio and what they can offer but um i didn't actually know about this part where you can fix it inside rococo studio until recently and that's that's amazing like it it looks so much better once you apply those filters to it and once once you optimize it before uh, outputting it it just it makes a world of difference now if you enjoyed this video make sure to smash that like button hit the sub button stay notified of future upcoming animation related videos and speaking of animation related terrible transition if you're interested in an extensive blender animation course well me and a couple of other people have been working on it for a couple of months and if you'd like more updates on that uh, once we're a little closer to release uh, and perhaps a discount code once it comes out make sure to sign up in the link I share in the comment section There's a pinned comment just for you with that I'd like to give a thank you to my patreons for their awesome support and I'll see you guys in the next video happy animals.